Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Assalamu alaikum. Uh, in this video, we will explain surgical approaches to impacted canine. Uh, first, uh, we will discuss the uh, surgical approaches to maxillary impacted canine. Later on in the video, we will discuss the um, approach, approach to the impacted mandibular canine. Uh, so three uh, approaches available for maxillary impacted canine is labial, palatal, or combination of both labial and palatal. So uh, first, uh, let's start the labial approach to maxillary canine. In this radiograph, you can see a bilateral impacted canine. And this is the right canine that is located labially while this left canine is located palatally. This localization of impacted canine uh, should be done uh, before the surgical uh, approach. The assessment of localization of impacted canine is very important uh, because you will not be able to decide whether you should take the labial approach or the palatal approach or the combination of both because the localization of the crown and root, you must know it by localizing the uh, proper position of the impacted canine. So here you can see a, a clinical picture. Uh, uh, here this arrow indicates the area uh, of uh, impacted canine. Uh, this can be uh, palpated. Sometimes the crown is uh, palpated by the clinical examination. So uh, as far as the uh, surgical flaps, uh, mucoperiosteal flaps are taken and uh, full thickness uh, and most commonly used uh, mucoperiosteal flap for the impacted canine, uh, that is a four corner flap. So here you can see a four corner flap has been taken and has been re reflected. Uh, follow us those basic principles of the flap design and the reflection. Uh, the first step, as you know, is the removal of the bone is a general principle for the impacted teeth. Uh, here you can see the bone or the crown of the tooth has been, uh, is going to be removed with the help of a round bar. So the you will remove the bone from the crown of the tooth till the whole of the crown is exposed until you reach the root area. So uh, when the root is exposed or a cervical area is exposed so you, that you can cut this crown um, portion because this is a horizontally placed and you must cut that crown so that this space should be created for the removal of the root later on. So for first step is uh, to cut the root, and uh, sorry, to cut the tooth be, uh, between the crown and the root area and the cervical area. Here you can see a straight fissure bar. bar. Uh, so the cut of the crown is complete and now you will remove this cut portion of the crown with the help of a straight elevator. Here you can see a straight elevator and this crown has been removed. Now this space is available for the removal of the of the root. If you will not cut the crown or remove the crown, then you will not be able to remove the uh, this root. So a purchase point will be created here in order to remove this root very easily. Here you can see the per this arrow shows the purchase point now you will take a cryer elevator or crane pick elevator. Here you can see a crane pick elevator and you will engage this and follow all those basic, basic principles as we discuss in the impaction and the mandibular impaction. Uh, so you will remove it with the help of a crane pick. Here you can see the crane pick is engaged and is removed. So the tooth has been removed. Now, uh, after removing, you will take care of the socket. And here you can see a, a curved hemostate and that is holding the follicle. And you will remove this follicle with the help of a curate. Here you can see, now you can see uh, in irregular bones 
and af after the removal of uh, remnants or anything else in the socket, you will use a bone file and smoothen all edges, irregular edges of the bone. And after the um, <clears throat> removal of the bone, you will reposition the flap in its proper position and you will suture this area. The mandatory suture here you can see that is the interdental area. This is the mandatory suture. This is also a mandatory suture. This one is mandatory suture. This one is mandatory suture. So these are all are the mandatory suture. At least here you will place one suture, but they depend upon the uh, length of the incision. Now come to the palatal approach to the maxillary K9. Here you can see a radiograph showing an impacted maxillary K9 with palatal localization. So again, this uh, localization uh, uh, of impacted K9 should be assessed or should be done before the surgical approach. So again, this is the uh, right side K9 and this is a palatally located. So we will uh, approach or you will uh, surgically um, remove this tooth on the palatal aspect. So here you can see the arrow indicate the area where you will find the crown of the impacted maxillary canine. Here you can uh, diagrammatic representation. And now this flap is very important. This is enveloped flap uh, starting uh, from the uh, distal aspect from uh, from the distal aspect of the premolar on the right side and up to the uh, canine area on the distal aspect of the uh, canine area on the opposite side. So you will uh, reflect this uh, um, flap and here you can see a clinical picture. This is, has been reflected. This arrow indicates the bulge area where the crown of the uh, maxillary impacted canine is present. So here, here you will start the bone cutting. Here you can see diagrammatic representation with the help of a round fissure. You will remove the bone and the crown has been exposed. And after the exposure, you can see a crown and the root is also available. So again, the same principle that you will cut the crown uh, and the root in the cervical area. This is the diagrammatic representation and this is a clinical picture. You can see a straight fissure bar that you are cutting the uh, crown portion from the root. After the removal of the, after the cutting of the crown, you will uh, uh, take a straight elevator and you will remove the crown. Here you can see a straight elevator and you will remove the crown. Now, the remaining um, portion that is the root as we discussed in the previous slides uh, for the um, labial approach, uh, you can see a cryer elevator or you can put a, a crane pick elevator here you can see crane pick elevator and you will remove with the help of a purchase point you will remove the root portion of the impacted maxillary canine so here you would have grammatic representation the tooth has been removed so any remnants uh, of the tooth or the bone or the follicle you will remove it you will take the care of the socket as we discussed with with the impacted mandibular or maxillary teeth uh, here you can see your tooth removal after the removal since you have taken a flare from the palatal side. So you will press it with the help of a finger uh, before the suturing. Again, the suturing is imparted a uh, mandatory suturing all in the areas or uh, the areas in the dental, uh, interdental areas. Uh, the sutures in the inter interdental areas are mandatory. You So you will place the sutures here in the interdental area. In every interdental area, you will place a suture. This is a clinical picture. You can see in the sutures in the interdental area. Now, let's see the surgical approach to mandibular impacted canine. 
the most common uh, surgical approach is the labial approach. Uh, in this radiograph, you can see uh, impacted mandibular canine, and you can also appreciate the presence of an odontome. Uh, in clinical picture, uh, you can see a retained deciduous teeth, that is the canine, deciduous canine, uh, that is on the right side, and on the left side, the permanent canine is present. So it means that this uh, uh, impacted canine is the right uh, canine. So this, this, uh, this should be removed at the end of the surgery. Uh, so now come to the design of the flap. This is a four corner flap and you must know the boundaries of the flap. On the right side, you can see that this is the distal aspect of the premolar. So while taking the vertical releasing incision over here, you must take care of the mental nerve. And uh, this is a <clears throat> uh, uh, boundary on the left side. This is on the distal aspect of the uh, lateral incisor. So this gives you a wide exposure. Or you can see a surgical excess for the removal of the odontome and the uh, deep uh, mandibular impacted tooth. Here you can see a uh, uh, incision uh, has been given. Um, that is a, a four corner flap. Uh, these you can see the design. This is the this is a diagrammatic uh, presentation, and this flap is fully reflected. Here you can see in clinical picture the fully reflected flap, and you can also appreciate the part of the crown of the tooth that is visible over here. Now, first step is that uh, you will sufficiently remove the bone uh, with, a, with a round bar so that the, uh, the tooth is fully exposed. Since this tooth is an, a vertical, therefore, in vertical, uh, vertically placed, therefore, and the, there will be no need of uh, <clears throat> cutting the tooth, that is the crown and the root, because when you will remove the uh, bone, you can easily uh, place a purchase point over here or with a straight elevator remove it easily. Here you can see the bone has been uh, removed and crown is fully exposed. Now there is no need to cut and you can easily place a straight fissure, um, sorry, a straight elevator and with or without purchase point. Here you can, you, here you can uh, place a pur purchase point with the help of a crane pick uh, or a cryer elevator, but a, uh, straight elevator is sufficient to remove the tooth because it is it is in a straight uh, or, or you can say a vertical position here you can see uh, a straight elevator and the tooth has been elevated the tooth has been removed you can see here and the deciduous tooth is a uh, retained deciduous uh, canine is also been removed now take care of this socket remove the <clears throat> bone debris or any other remnants thoroughly irrigate, take all precautionary measures uh, which has been mentioned in the previous videos and uh, then the flap has been repositioned in its original position and sutures are placed here you can see here. Thank you.